We often hear that I can't use foam because I can't afford it. And that's actually not true if you take a real close look at things. It's important to remember that polyurethane foam, because it serves so many purposes and uh, characteristics are so varied, it's a vapor retarder, so it can be the vapor control layer. It's an air barrier. It can be the air infiltration control layer. It's insulation, of course. It's fully adhered. It's doing a lot for our construction, our buildings, our building envelope. So if we're comparing the cost of foam to that of other materials, you have to remember it's an insulation and a barrier. So we get the benefit of a single product doing so many tasks. Remember to add in the cost of labor for the installation of insulation boards, for example, in commercial work, for air barriers that have to be added when you use board stock, the labor for each of those materials, and who's doing installations of those materials. Are they trained? Are they as trained as the polyurethane foam installer? These are all considerations, not necessarily of cost, but certainly of financial impact on your project. In residential construction, we have the same issues. Because foam acts as a vapor control layer, an air infiltration control layer, and the thermal layer for a building, if we're going to compare costs, we have to add in all of those other materials and the labor to install them. If we think about insulation specifically, and we are buying an insulation, so let's look at the R value. Let's look at the installed cost per R for foam and compare it to other materials. If we consider the installed cost per R, and it's R value, that's what we're buying and that's what we're looking to compare the costs of. R13 fiberglass bat is about 20 cents a square foot per R. So you take the installed cost of fiberglass for R13, you divide it by the R value, that'll give you your square foot cost per R. And these are taken from RS Means, which is a database for all construction materials, their installation costs, their raw material costs, etc. Been used for years, so we'll use it here in today's example. R13 closed cell is about 13 cents a square foot per R, and that's beneficial for the spray foam boys. R38 fiberglass, once we get into the thicker insulations, now there's a problem and the performance has to be downgraded to fiberglass. So we do that by adding cost in order to get to an equivalent performance. Seven cents a square foot per R for R38 fiberglass becomes R11 when you consider the impact, the lack of performance of an R38 bat. If we look at R38 closed cell, it's 11 cents a square foot per R. It's the same price installed. So with the benefits associated with spray foam, structural integrity, uh, vapor control layer, air infiltration control layer, and insulation, it makes more sense at this point to use spray foam. To help you understand a little bit more about spray foam and to help you integrate it into your operation, I've created educational courses on my website at letstalkpur.com or you can click on the link in the video description. I encourage you to check them out. I'll see you there.